Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I'm so excited for today's video because it involves two of my favorite things in the beauty world, blush and Wayne Goss. Yep, that's right. We are going to be trying out not one, but two of the new Weightless Veil blush palettes. In all honesty, I really wanted to get all four and I hesitated for several reasons other than just my pocketbook and I will get into those in a little bit. But before we get started, if we haven't met before, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Kelly and I am a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on YouTube, I strive to keep beauty real, real honest, real relatable and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to hit subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. But if you are a blush lover like me, or you just really love Wayne Goss, let's get right into this video. Now, if you've stopped by my channel before, you know I have a long time love affair with Wayne Goss. Not in that way, but I love his just kind soul. I love his makeup artistry. I really love his aesthetic as far as beauty goes. And I was very, very excited to get my hands on these blush palettes because I think Wayne and I sort of have like the same vibe as far as like blushers go. In fact, I know that's, I think that's what I should call it for the rest of this video is blusher because that's what he says and I just find it like so luxe and fancy. So maybe we'll call it blusher for the rest of this video. But I, I just love that he likes that you but better appeal. That was one of the big reasons I picked up the Imperial Topaz palette is just because it's like beauty basics done beautifully if that makes sense. And I have been very happy with this palette, so I didn't hesitate at all to buy a couple of these palettes. Now, I did pick up two, like I said. So the first palette that I got was the Coral Rose, and this has the shades Blushing and Rosy. Um, I think this is gonna be really great for me this winter. I think so. This is, by the way, a first impression video. I have not even swatched these. I wanted to do it all on camera with you guys so that we could play with them together, but I will, I mean, I did kind of like peck on the bronzer, um, not to mention peck on the eyeshadow. I should probably have done something a little bit more mellow, but I did just do a video on the uh, Pat McGrath Mothership Mega Palette. So uh, that one will probably be coming either right after this or right before it. So if it is before this, I will go ahead and link that below. But um, I think, as I was saying, I did peck on quite a bit of bronzer today, but as it goes more into the fall and winter, I will probably lose some of my summer glow and this will look lovely. The one that I just like instantly knew I had to have though is I think the one that shockingly everyone is super excited about and that is Vivid Azalea. Oh, you guys, look at this. It is that beautiful like orchid fuchsia shade. Um, I am a little intimidated by this highlighter, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think it was an interesting like combo to pair together, but um, I trust in Wayne. So we will go ahead and be trying both of these out. What I thought I would do is go ahead and do one on one side and one on the other, also using two techniques both that Wayne talked about in his intro video. I will also link his intro video to this beautiful collection down below. Now, I did mention that uh, while I was wanting to get all four of the palettes, I did only get two. I will go ahead and pop the picture up here of the quad of blush palettes so that you guys can see. Um, I really, really, really wanted the Bright Poppy because that blush speaks to my soul. Like, oh, a bright, like, that sort of like tangerine coral shade just really like speaks to my heart. But that highlighter, I, I just can't see it working on my skin. And I know that um, Wayne had both Kelsey Brianna J and uh, Mel Thompson as his sort of like swatch models because Mel is more on the fair side and Kelsey is more on the deeper side. But I also watched Mel's video and I honestly felt like she, you know, she even said like, it's a little tricky to use. You'd really have to um, use it in a certain way. And for me, I just knew that I probably wouldn't do that. So to only buy, be buying that palette for essentially the blush, I was kind of like mm, weighing the scales. Now we will see how I feel after using these. Maybe I will change my mind and go get the others. The other shade, um, the name is escaping me right now. Um, I will put it up here, but um, it was honestly just something that didn't like speak to my heart. It looked pretty. I think that the highlight was um, a little bit pinker. Was that Blush Peony? I think that might be the shade, Blushing Peony. I could totally be wrong, but anyway, um, 
It had a more pinky highlight, which I don't tend to go towards, but I think it would be very beautiful on. It just wasn't something that I was like, ooh, I need that in my collection. Now, before I get too carried away chattering, why don't I just go ahead and swatch these for you? I'm gonna go through with that Coral Rose palette first. We will take the blush shade. And I'm just gonna pop this here for you guys. Sorry if there are remnants of eyeshadow. Um, I just swatched that entire Mothership Mega Palette, all 18 shades, so my uh, arm has seen quite a bit of swatches lately. So I'm pretty sure that blushing is the blush shade and rosy is the highlight, although there is nothing rosy about this highlight. There is all sorts of beautiful about this highlight, but nothing rosy. Yeah, this is really, really pretty. If you guys can see there, so gorgeous. So this is like, I think, a highlight that would work on a lot of skin tones. And while I think um, this blush would, you know, on deeper skin tones, just give that like slight natural flush, I think that everybody could use this. So I'm very excited for this one to try it out. Now, of course, we have Vivid Azalea. I'm gonna take the shocking shade. You guys, I'm so excited. This is very shocking, but in a good way. Oh, yes, I am. I had to pick this one up. I can tell you guys already, I don't have anything like this in my collection. I mean, if I do, I'm gonna be shocked and it's something that got buried somewhere because I really, I really don't see it. So then we have the pearl shade, which is, oh, uh, you know, it's like a champagne gold, but it has a pinky flip to it. So, oh, you guys, so, so pretty. Honestly, I, I just, I can't wait to dive right into these. Now, again, if you know me, you know that I'm also obsessed with Wayne's brushes, and this is no exception. This is probably my favorite blush brush. It is the Wayne Goss number 14. I really love this for blush and also sometimes for like a wash of highlight. So very, very much in love. Um, I also really enjoy that this is like a little bit looser of a brush. So I thought this would be nice because we can try it out with a bit lighter hand. And then if I would like to, I might go through with the Wayne Goss number 10 just to like really pack some pigment. So let's go ahead and try this out. Now, if you guys saw my Trend Mood black owned beauty brand um, box review, I was talking about how like when you were working with either deeper or brighter or pigmented shades, going in with either like a duo fiber brush or something that's a little bit looser like this is going to help give you a little bit of um, security in your application because even if you tend to be more heavy handed, you can you know, really get a nice blended application. And I am definitely someone who likes to wear blush a little higher on the cheek just to keep a more lifted effect. Um, I did talk about that in my makeup mistakes that might be making you look older video. I think that that's what it was called. I'm gonna link it here. It is an older video, like, so the production quality of it maybe isn't as good as now. Not that I'm like by any means a production queen, but I really do think that there's some great info in that one. I was very proud of that. So I will go ahead and link that one, um, but I do really like to wear a blush higher on the cheekbone. Um, I don't really consider myself of a mature age, but I am almost 40. I just turned 39, so I could use all the help I can get to like keep everything where I want it. Um, and that is one thing that I really honor about Wayne's aesthetic is not even just his aesthetic. I would say like his brand appeal is he really wants products that look gorgeous on any skin tone, on any age of skin, you know, if you have slightly more mature skin that is going to tend to have more texture, you know, fine lines and wrinkles, um, he wants you to look lovely and to feel lovely. And so that's something that I really enjoy. So we will see how I feel about this formula. I, um, I don't consider myself to have highly textured skin, but I do have a little bit going on. So we'll see when we pop this highlighter on how I feel about this. Um, speaking of how I feel about this, what do you guys think of that blush? Um, I think, now this is just a very sheer wash, but this is beautiful. Like if I was wearing an eye look like this and you know, a little bit more natural lip like I have on right now, this is about what I would wear, maybe a bit more, but just to balance, this is like a beautiful soft every day. I mean, you could just quickly swipe it on and be good to go. Now, I certainly could go ahead and keep packing it on with this brush, but I am gonna go through with this more dense brush. Again, this is the number 10 and 
I'm just gonna pop this on. If you are an apple of the cheeks kind of girl, this would be um, a good one to just like right on there. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop this on and then blend it out with this little uh, fluffier brush. And as I get this on, I can start seeing that this blush does have a tiny amount of glow to it. And I think that Wayne even mentioned that um, this is like the one blush that isn't like fully matte. This does have like a bit of a sheen to it. I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Mm -hmm. So you guys can see that little bit of a glow. Now, I did also make sure to put on a foundation and concealer that I know that I like just in case there was like some troubleshooting going on, I would know that it wasn't the base that I started with. So very, very beautiful. I love this so much. Okay, so I think that this, if you aren't sure which shade to get and you're like, I don't know what's gonna go with my skin tone, I can already tell you that this is probably the one that I would steer you towards because I truly do think it could work on everybody. Now, that being said, let's pop into this highlighter. So I'm just gonna keep you guys zoomed in and I am gonna go through with this brush. Mm -hmm. Special edition, the one? Mm, maybe, I think it's maybe called the one. Uh, again, I will pop this down here. You'd think I'd know better, but this one doesn't actually have it marked on it. Um, but I do really enjoy this one. It's kind of like a brush that you can have a one and done. Like you could use it for your contour, for your blush, for your highlight. And I really do enjoy this brush. Okay, that is really very pretty. So you can see that, you know, this is really more of like, I would say the traditional or standard application where you're going to use your blush and then top it with a highlighter. I think that you know, that really is what most people do every day. Now, Wayne also did talk about putting the highlighter on and then the blush over the top. So I think what I'm gonna do to maybe slightly mimic that is I'm just gonna take a bit more of this blush on the number 14. So we have, you know, a little bit more of like a airbrushed lightweight feel and pop this right back over the top. Now, oftentimes if I'm working with something that I want to look very natural, very like, you know, maybe you drank a lot of water that day kind of look, that's what I will do is I will go ahead and put the highlight on and then a blush over the top. And especially because this does have a bit of sheen in it, I could definitely see that working really well. And I'm physically seeing it working really well. So, oh, I really like this. Now, um, by the way, if you happen to see any little like micro flex of shimmer, that is from this eye look. I had a little bit of a fallout situation, but if we look back here, I mean, I don't see it enhancing any texture at all. Like, I mean, I have texture. It's not like making it go away. It's not like it's like a blurring primer or anything, but it certainly doesn't enhance it. I feel very confident in this. What do you guys think? Now that I've put about three times the amount on that I would normally wear, I'm feeling definitely like very blushed. Well, three times the amount I would wear if I have this heavy of an eye look on. I love a good like little bit of winged liner, heavier blush, just like very fresh cheeked look. But with these eyes, it's a little bit much, but it's okay. I think Wayne will understand. All right, so why don't we go ahead and use Vivid Azalea on this side? Okay, so on this side, I think I am going to do kind of the reverse of what we just did. I think I'm gonna lay down the highlight first and then put the blush over the top to see how we feel about that. Um, I can always put more highlight over the top if need be. All right, I'm gonna go through with um, a 10 brush again, this time using it for the highlighter and just tap in the tip and pop this on. Yeah, this is very, <laughs> this is a very pigmented highlighter, you guys. I mean, I knew it would be, which is, why I was like a little hesitant to get it, but that being said, it's still pretty darn wearable. Um, It's not as light and icy as I thought it was going to be. Like it actually picks up, 
Hmm. I'm going to have to swatch these side by side again because I feel like this almost comes up a little deeper on the skin um, just because it has that like gold reflect, which is not what I thought I was going to see. I thought I was going to see more of that like pinky flip, but it's very, very pretty. All right, now for the scary part. Now, I've heard so many people say that a little goes a long way with this one, and obviously with such a like strong color, you want to just use a little bit. So I'm just tipping a little bit into another number 14, and then I'm buffing that powder into the bristles by popping it onto my hand. So just really kind of like working it in, and then we're just gonna like feather this over the top. And I do have a bit, like I've got like a little acne scar here going on right now. Um, gotta love that, but so you will, it will probably look, if you see like a little patch right there, that's not the blush, that's a, that's the owner of the blush. All right, that little dab is all I need. Like, I don't wanna put on anymore. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's really, really beautiful, but it's definitely enough. I, I really like this tone though, like, again, I have quite the eye look on right now, so maybe that's not the best for this look, but the tone of it is so pretty. Like, I feel like this is gonna be like that really winter, like icy, especially when I get a little bit more pale even, and that might sound like, sort of like counterintuitive to what you would think, but as I get more pale, I think this like frozen cheek, like frosty vibe is gonna be super pretty. I, I wish I could put both of them on this cheek because this is like my favorite side of my face. My bone structure is just a little bit better and I don't have that scar, but you work with what you got. So that is really, really pretty. I don't know why I'm putting on more, but I am. I'm just sort of like overlapping that highlighter a bit more. All right, so to go through and like really kick up this tone, I'm gonna take the 03 from Wayne Goss's eye collection and just really strategically place this. For those of you that like a really intense highlight, now that used to be me, but I just find that my aesthetic is changing a bit. I'm gonna work it up onto the brow. That is really pretty. Less scary than I thought it was gonna be, which I'm very excited about. So I think what I'm gonna do, I don't have an inner corner highlight. The Celestial Divinity palette didn't have something that I felt like would really go, so I'm actually gonna use this on my inner corner. Oh, you guys. Okay, this is like shocking. I was not anticipating liking this highlight as much as I do. I am just gonna keep packing this on all night long. I'll see you guys in an hour when I look like a beautiful robot. All right, so here we have Vivid Azalea, so pretty. And here we have Coral Rose. All right, I zoomed out so we could chat a little bit, but first I wanna go ahead and set my face just because I would totally, I mean, every day I set my face, especially if I'm using any powder products. So I'm gonna go through and first of all, turn down my light because I feel like I'm a little bright. So I'm going through with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. I've tried saying the name three times now and I keep saying air blush, but it's air brush flawless setting spray. Mm-hmm, you guys. Stop me, somebody needs to come and hold my hands because I feel like I want the other shades. Okay, so let me know down below which side you guys like better. Now, what I really wanna do is swatch these two highlights right next to each other because like I said, I'm a little bit surprised by the tone of that pearl shade. Yeah, okay, see, I think everybody you know, in the beauty community, if you will, was looking at this in the pan and thinking like, damn, this is a bright, bright blush with a light, light highlight. But you guys can see here, this is the pearl from Vivid Azalea and this is the rosy from Coral Rose. Like this one definitely is lighter, but 
and this one is definitely a bit warmer because it has a gold shift to it. So I was a little shocked by that. I mean, I know that I saw swatches. I don't know if it was Wayne himself or if I was watching Mel's channel, but I know I saw swatches, but sometimes it just isn't until you get it in your own hands that you, you know, really see what something is like. So I definitely am very happy. Now, just to talk a little bit about some pros and cons. So I guess I would say that the cons of any duo. If you like the blush, but you don't so much like the highlight, you're really only going to be getting use out of half the palette, right? And that is one of the cons of having a palette like this. And I will say, I do think I would prefer if he had launched blushers separate from highlights, just because then you could really like pick and piece. Now, I know that most of the time from a packaging standpoint, um, it's just like, you know, in, in my hair industry, like, a little travel size, the packaging on a travel size is not that much less expensive than the packaging on a regular size. So that's why oftentimes like travel sizes really aren't that much cheaper. So it could be part of that. Um, it could just be that he wanted a cohesive look from his like design standpoint, but I would personally like to be able to pick and piece because then I could have gotten that blushing poppy shade. Now, again, to address the highlight in that palette, I personally feel and again, I haven't had my hands on it. Maybe it'll be just like this highlight and I'll feel totally different, but I really do feel like it's going to be too deep for fair to medium skin tones. And most of the reason for that is because a lot of times if a highlight that's on the deeper side or like the more like deeper golden side, if it's not directly hitting the light, when you turn this way, it's going to have a darker shadow. So I pulled out this Zodiac Cosmetics Zeus highlight to sort of hopefully show you what I mean here. Now, again, this is not a comparison of formulas. This is sort of just what I know about makeup um, and my personal and professional opinion. Okay, so you guys can see here, it looks lighter and you know, more like wearable. Like in all honesty, I feel like if I blur this out, you're gonna think like, oh, anybody can wear that shade, right? And in fact, just to keep it fair, I'm gonna blur it out on both sides. But can you see where my arm shifts and it isn't hitting the light anymore? It looks so much darker. Like it looks darker than my skin. So that means that if I top my cheekbone with that color, if I'm not, like this all the time, when I'm facing someone, that's actually gonna look more recessed and sunken in than lifted and pulled up and out. So I just, I don't feel like I would use that. I do think you could mix it into the other side to get a more like golden shimmery blush and that would be super beautiful. But I think if you have fair to like light medium skin, I, I really, I just don't think that it's going to work as well. So. That again is just my opinion. I really haven't seen anyone other than Mel um, who has a lighter skin tone using that blush shade. And honestly, she even said kind of the same thing. And you know, like I said, just from what I know about color um, and cosmetics, I think that that's probably what would happen. So that is one downside is if you like the blush, you don't like the highlighter, you're only gonna be, you know, getting half of your money's worth perhaps. Now, speaking of money, Again, we're gonna talk about price per ounce and a lot of people laugh at me for doing this, but this is where I really think you can find the value or lack of value in a product. So one thing that I don't even think that I mentioned is the fact that these retail for $45 and you do get 19 grams of product inside of this. So if you think, I'm just assuming that that's eight grams per side, right? So if we look at how this breaks down cost per gram, the Wayne Goss blush palette is $2.37 per gram. And I'm gonna kind of like keep track of this right here. I'll give, give myself a little scooch over here so that you guys can see this. Now I also priced out some of what I think are like very well-known brands. So if we look at highlighters, right away I think of the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the press version, right? So those actually come out to $5.42 per gram. 
So did anyone else think that you could get Wayne Goss for cheaper than Becca Cosmetics? I certainly didn't. I've literally done the math three times now because I keep second guessing myself, but this is why it's really important to check out price per ounce because you look at like, oh, well, Becca's only $38 and this Wayne Goss thing is like 45, but you get seven grams of product in a Becca Cosmetics Shimmering Skin Perfector, the pressed version, but you get a whole 19 grams of product in the Wayne Goss. So here is where you really have to kind of see where your money goes. Now, another sort of like hyped up highlighter that I was hearing a lot about for a while was the Natasha Denona Super Glow. That's a favorite of a lot of people. That one comes out at $3.89 a gram. Wayne Goss here is at the bottom of that cost price range. Are you guys shocked? So then when we look at blushes, right? So one of my very personal favorite blushes is the Hourglass Ambient Blushes. I mean, hands down, one of my favorites of all time. That comes out to $9.41 a gram. Mm -hmm. Now, even though I'm shocked by this, I'm not gonna stop buying Hourglass blushes because I think they're beautiful. We are also talking about really very different formulas. I mean, those are definitely more of like a glowy, like ethereal blush, but I'm just talking about price per gram when you buy that compact, right? Another one is Charlotte Tilbury, right? A lot of people love her cheek to chic those come out to $5 a gram. So again, Wayne Goss is at the lower end of this. So if you're thinking like, oh, Wayne Goss, he's luxury, like, ugh, I just don't know. You're getting some serious bang for your buck in this palette. So if you have been hesitant because of the price, but you are someone that, you know, if you got a blush palette that you really liked and you would use up, this is definitely going to be worth the money. That's sort of my skinny on that. I also know a lot of people were a little bit bummed that the packaging is like the exact same as the eye palette packaging. I don't really care about that. In all honesty, I keep all of my makeup like compartmentalized where I have like blushes separate from eyeshadows, separate from highlighters. So for me, that's not really a big deal. I actually like the sleek look of it. I could see if maybe um, at one point, like if there was like a little detail or something just like minute where if you really knew your packaging, you'd be like, oh, there's the blusher. I'm just going to grab that or, oh, there's the eye palette. But I'm, I really don't mind at all. So I'm very grateful to have these. I also just have to say, I mean, I doubt Wayne is ever going to see this video, but I have been watching Wayne since I very first started watching YouTube. I think he was like the second or third person I subscribed to just because I loved his honesty. I loved his like candid, frank manner. Um, and I loved his heart. And I am just so proud of you, Wayne. Like these are beautiful products. And in all honesty, if I didn't like them, I would, I would say it because Wayne would say it about another company if there was something that he didn't like. So because he is someone that I look up to and honor his honesty, I would definitely be honest. But I really love these. And honestly, I might go pick up that Poppy palette because even if I never touch the highlighter, we're looking at very quickly for 74 an ounce for if I just consider the amount of product that's in that blush. That's still less than almost anything else on here other than Natasha Denona. So 474 is still cheaper per gram than Hourglass and Charlotte Tilbury. So if I never touched the other side of that palette, I'd still be ahead compared to these other two brands. So I hope that that helps you guys. Um, again, I'm sorry if this was like a little all over the place. It's getting pretty late at night here, but I am very happy to have these in my collection. Let me know if you picked any up down below. And as always, I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I know, you know, our time is a precious thing. And the fact that you took some of it out of your day to watch this video means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a like. If you are new to my channel, I would love to see you subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future notifications. I've got some great videos coming up. I will see you really soon. But I'm going to go through with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush. So I'm gonna go through with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush, Airbrush, stop it. So I'm going through with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. That is actually gonna look recessed as opposed to like 